Hello everyone, and welcome to a mid-evil. This is a retro first-person shooter game created in a year in time, and we're gonna play through it. This is a game that I find myself coming back to like once every other year, and I've never really had a bad time with it, and it's really pretty and it's fun, so we're just gonna have a good time with it. Uh, going to the options, we will be playing on warrior mode and auto soul mode. We'll talk about what that means later, but for now, let's just start with the main campaign. It came from the age beyond the ages. From the space beyond vision. Wheeling in an abyss of infinite darkness. They were minute among a myriad vast ones. Bright amid a myriad dark ones. We failed. And that concludes the story. There is a little bit more story, but well, there's a lot of story actually. Uh, you can go to the codex in the menu and there is a bunch of stuff to read about that I'm not going to focus on too much, but it does have some interesting information in there that can help you out. I will just briefly move here to turn on the music. And there is a message. If you get close to messages, it'll say a line of text usually. Uh, some interesting stuff about the text. We're going to be here for a while. Some interesting things about the text here is that the characters appear to be upside down Tibetan, uh, which it's probably the Tibetan. I'm not 100% sure, but if I go to the Brahmic scripts Wikipedia page, then half of them don't load because of my language settings, so don't worry about it. What is interesting uh, about this beyond that, though, is that people have figured out that the characters can be translated back to characters of the Latin alphabet, and that's more or less how they're used in this game every now and then for very specific easter eggs, which is, uh, this text for instance says, Welcome to the Gateway, if read from left to right, top to bottom. Which is a little bit different from the text here, so the translations often don't line up, usually it's just gibberish, but occasionally there's hidden jokes in there, so we're gonna try to focus on that. We got a big axe in our hand, if we try to swing it, it makes one of the best sounds ever heard. You can use it to destroy some of these pots. And we have entered the difficulty selection screen. Uh, easy difficulties right here. If you walk through this portal, we can start the game on easy, but we're gonna play on the most difficult one. Uh, these symbols right here. This is probably also more of an indicator that it probably is based on Tibetan, and we're gonna be talking about Tibet for a while here. Um, just because the numbers just line up almost perfectly, so there's a reasonable chance for sure, but let's move on regardless. I'm also not going to focus too much on the texts that are just numbers, because <laughs> as interesting as they are, uh, most of them are indeed just sort of stuff, and I'm more interested in the ones that are at least a little bit different. Medium difficulty, right here, you have to do one tiny jump, which is deceivingly difficult, but it is certainly doable to go into the medium difficult teleporter. If you fall down, uh, the game hints that perhaps you should go elsewhere. Over yonder, there is going to be one more difficulty setting, which is hard, uh, which we can briefly jump to. If you jump up while a platform is moving up, then uh, you'll generally get a little bit more height, and it makes the jumps a little bit easier to do if you want to do hard difficulty, but unfortunately we fell down, and as such we are deemed not worthy, and we will indeed turn back. There is a fourth difficulty setting, which is going to be the one we're playing on. It is hiding down there. We'll get to that in just a moment. But there is a little bit more hidden stuff inside this place. If we jump up here, we can jump over the hole and reach this little line of text. This actually does say nothing here, but the upside down Tibetan has been rotated 180 degrees. <laughs> Um, which is why the dots are in the top left over there, but it is actually the same text that is written. Uh, so, there's some fun stuff for you right there. And a little bit further ahead, there is a tiny jumping puzzle that you can do to reach this text right here, which just says, oh, whoa, what's this? Very good. There is also an achievement uh, for dying in the gateway, which is this whole place. If you jump down here... You get that achievement immediately. 
And it's uh, it's a very easy way to do it. There's other ways to do it because there's flames and such. You can stand on one of these pots with the fire and it'll slowly take damage. But near the uh, evil difficulty portal, which is where we are going to right now, there is some flames, some hot coals on the floor as well, which deal a decent chunk of damage every time you touch them, so... Yeah, definitely easy to die. This difficulty doesn't specify what the differences is between the other ones, but it is basically just more enemies, less pickups, faster enemies, and then certain things that happen sometimes on other difficulty happen all the time on this one. It's uh, it's trickier, but we'll just move on. Yeah. And if you step in the water, you slowly heal because the waters of the gateway heal all wounds. Over here, a little bit more lore that evil has overrun our sacred lands and we must free them. Uh, but if we cheat a little bit, uh, we can fly up and read the text a little bit more clearly where it actually says, LOL, WTF is going on here. I really want to know what's going on in this level, which ultimately is also pretty important information. Uh, this is based on this text right here. We do indeed need to visit the t two worlds to proceed. The second world is right here, and we need to visit the first one to go there. If you want to switch difficulty, you can go back up here. And I'm mostly showing off this for one purpose. Also, I should make my axe appear again. Uh, you can go back here to return to the difficulty selection. This portal is mostly interesting because it's moving, uh, where other portals are all just showing a static image. This is, I think, the only one that might actually be moving around, which is a little unusual, but I can kind of understand why as well. Uh, because if you, again, uh, go to the first level portal right here, to the Astral Equinox, uh, that one right there, you can see it's a static image, and if we were to type in Aether to no clip through the world, uh, we can actually see the other side of the portal as well. And... I suppose this isn't as interesting of a view. <laughs> so I can kind of see why they would decide to make the remaining portal static, but that one at least move around a little bit because there's just a little bit more to look at. But with that, let's get started. I promise I'm not going to be cheating too much while we're actually playing the game, but I will <laughs> probably show off little things here and there. We are in the first level and right from the get-go. I should also mention we're getting all kills, all secrets, all that good stuff. Right from the get-go, below the starting platform, there is a secret area waiting for you. If you jump down, then it's, without cheats, very difficult to get back up again, so you gotta kinda get this at the start. We can jump down into the water, where a secret sword is awaiting us. That's two secret areas already. Now let's at least try out the axe here on actual enemies, because when we move forward there's going to be a couple enemies walking towards us. And the axe in these first couple of levels is just so strong. It works very well against the enemies that we're going to be facing here, so that is wonderful. Some ammo for a future weapon right there. There is a message here that says press tab to see level stats. If we press it once, it'll show kills and secrets and time. If we press it twice, it'll also show messages, which that one first one. And dest, which means for destroyed uh, things. Props, I suppose. We're not going to go for destroyed props. There is an achievement for destroying all of the props in a level. And we'll probably do that every now and then, but... I have tried in the past to record a playthrough destroying everything, and after a while it just becomes very tedious. <laughs> so we're just not going to bother with that too much. Instead, we're going to move on. Uh, if we move a little closer here, we can try out our sword. It is pretty great, and occasionally enemies will die in a particularly gruesome manner. And uh, it will say overkill at the top. Generally, there's not that it's not that important, but they'll die in a slightly different way. And there is a weapon where overkills do become important. Now, an enemy just fell into the water. And when enemies fall into the water, they get kind of stuck. They don't really know what to do anymore. If you get close to them, they'll still try to attack you. But overall, uh, it does mean that when an enemy falls into the water, it's very easy to lose them. You cannot drown in this game, and neither can the enemies. And that can be a real problem when trying to go for all kills, because uh, well, be, if an enemy falls into the water, it can be very easy to just forget about them. But fortunately, uh, there is a cheats section in the Codex 
Uh, but unfortunately, the cheat I'm about to show off doesn't exist in it. But there is a, <laughs> there is a cheat, which is A-E-D-A-R, ADAR, which turns on the enemy radar. Um, and it shows enemies through walls effectively. So if you are actually struggling with one more missing enemy, my recommendation is that you just cheat and try to find it that way, because occasionally enemies get stuck in the weirdest places. <laughs> Either way, we're just gonna move on. I should also point out, when an enemy dies, they drop a soul. In the bottom left, underneath my health, there is a little bar. The little blue one, the little glowy one that's filling up slowly but surely. When that fills up, we can go into soul mode. And I'll talk about that when we actually have filled up that bar. For now, let's get our second weapon. The Azure Orb, we can shoot uh, kind of homing projectiles at the enemies here. As you can see, it's uh, a little bit easier to aim. And that's just nice. There's a message on the floor here that says the way forward lies both left and right. We do need two keys to open this door. The first one's right there, but we can't quite reach it. I should also point out this text right here, because if we step on this, this also counts as a message, I believe. This says, from the sacred waters, the Azure Orb was formed, and that is basically, if you read the text over here, that is identical to what it says. It just says, from the Azure Orb, uh, from, wait, uh, from the sacred waters, the Azure Orb was formed. But then, there's a whole bunch of text over here as well. This is all mirrored, but you can still read it. Uh, and it does actually say, uh, what does it say? Blue wand, water staff. Who really knows what to call it? And uh, to call it is one word right there. So that's fun. Just a little neat little detail that no one's going to see. <laughs> but I can see it, and that's good. Also, I have RTX turned on a little bit, just for good stuff. Uh, not shadows. My computer can't handle it, but a little bit of RTX in the snack. For now, though, we're going to move on. There is going to be a really big uh, ball hill up here. This is the legendary soul. Uh, previously, I pointed out that the options I have uh, auto soul mode turned on, which usually, if you attack with that on, it'll uh, turn on soul mode and make your weapons act a little bit differently. Who made that noise just now? <laughs> don't matter, don't worry about it. Uh, but if you're already attacking after picking it up, it won't actually activate soul mode until the next time you actually uh, click the attack button which is a way you can circumvent accidentally using soul mode if you don't want it. You can even switch weapons if you're just holding the attack button the entire time. It's just that this is a little cheesy. <laughs> this is a little, a lot cheesy, so I'm not going to try to use it too much, but it's, it's a neat way to circumvent the difficulty of uh, auto soul mode if you so desire. For now, though, let's go further up ahead. There's a button. If we press it, it is going to make some stairs appear over there, and while we wait for that, we can get one more secret area with some extra health right here. And we can talk about soul mode. So if we attack with that bar filled up and the screen being all glowy like it currently is, uh, the weapons will act a little bit differently, kind of like the Tome of Power in Heretic. Where if we attack with the sword, it's going to make really big projectiles that just fly through everything. If we attack with the Azure Orb, it's practically a machine gun against these flying enemies, which is great. And then with the axe, it goes all spinny, and you can go faster through water with it. Which I think there is actually an achievement for just doing that once. So <laughs> at some point, if you find water and have soul mode active, definitely recommend it. It also just makes you go really fast, so that's also always a good time. There is a secret area right here. You can also jump down uh, to that place if you want, but we'll get there later through regular means as well, so we don't particularly need to. Here is a red room. Shoot it, and the door opens. Mostly says that so you understand how they work. Very nice. And honestly, I'm mostly just going to be using the axe in this chapter, just because it's so useful against these enemies. One thing of note as well, and I just crouched and hit him with the axe a whole bunch until he died, is that every episode has different enemies, so certain weapons will work better in other chapters than others, and it makes for a neat balance, and actually makes all the weapons usable in their own way, which is nice. We got the silver key, so we can open up the silver portion of the door, if we so desire, but we do still need to get the gold key to actually progress, so let's go down here. Kill some more enemies. And also, these enemies occasionally shoot a projectile, and with the sword you can 
make that cool sound to make them go away. Makes it a little bit expensive to use the weapon, preferably you just dodge their attacks as much as you can, but... Uh, you know, it's, it's an option. It's nice that it's there for sure. Also, one thing about the sword is that if you hit something with the center of the projectile, it'll just disappear. But if you hit it with the side, uh, if you do it properly, it'll just keep going instead. And you can, uh, if you want to destroy all the things, this is actually a pretty good way of doing it. Because you just end up destroying so much stuff and just all at the same time, which is nice. Moving on though, there is a couple more enemies waiting for us over here. There is a jump you can do from here as well. And we'll just deal with these enemies nice and quick. There's a jump you can do from up here to that place with the fires next to it. There is a secret area waiting for us over here as well. There is another way of doing that jump, which is significantly more tricky. And that enemy is not supposed to spawn yet, but I guess he decided to appear a little sooner today. <laughs> Very strange. I didn't actually know you could spawn him that early, actually, but fair enough. I guess he's dead now, so we don't have to worry about him later. Because the locked door is right there, and I guess I just jumped close enough for him to spawn. Very interesting. Anyway, you can do this jump to reach this sl strange little sloped area. And if you then sort of nudge yourself in here and jump and then press forward, right, and backwards, then occasionally you'll end up uh, jumping on top of this little platform right here which also skips about half the level because we are now past the point of the locked door so it's not exactly meant to be able to be done like this i don't think but it is a pretty good way to actually reach the secret area once you're up here it's a very easy jump to make from this point on there is also another secret area waiting for us over here with a soul and some health very nice and then a little bit further ahead, a place where we already were previously, there is another message right there. Um, it is technically possible to reach that without cheats, uh, but it's horrible. <laughs> I have made a video on how to reach it. It requires some enemies that spawn over there later. Uh, but for now, we are just going to enter the codex. We're going to scroll down a bit and we're going to find fly mode over here. So if we type A-E-R-O, we can fly a little bit. And we can reach this message that says, how'd you get here? Which is honestly a fair question. But the text also actually says that. So that's a nice little translation for you right there. It's not required. It doesn't count up your messages. We were already at four and uh, it didn't make it go up. But it's just a, there's a bunch of those throughout the game that are very easily missable, and I honestly don't know if I know of all of them, but we're gonna just do our best here. Two more messages here, soul and fire, water and blood. I think the actual text writes out something a little bit different, but more or less the same, so fair enough. When we pick up this soul, and I'm once again going to choose this a little bit, uh, it is going to make a bunch of enemies appear, but I don't want to activate soul mode yet, so we're just gonna take care of those with our axe and then activate soul mode as we progress onwards here, because there is a decent chunk of enemies. I never really know what the best part is for soul mode, but occasionally when you can just kill a whole bunch of enemies through the power of soul mode, it is just a really good time, you know? As long as you just get a whole bunch of stuff done, it's probably worthwhile to use it. But it certainly is easier if you don't have auto soul mode, because that means that if you are struggling with a fight in, in any way, then at least you'll have a way of dealing with the remaining enemies, which is really nice. It, it just works as kind of a panic button if you really need to, and I can appreciate that. We have a whole bunch of kills and secrets and messages and whatnot, so let's move on. That enemy is already dead, but normally there would be an enemy at the, at, the, at the end there. Moving a little bit further forward, these enemies appear. These are the enemies that I was talking about previously in order to reach that very secret message. You can technically lure one all the way over there and then use two of its projectiles to jump all the way up there. These enemies are pretty mean and there's not that much of them, so we're just gonna play this nice and safe and just shoot a whole bunch of Azuro projectiles into the distance until they stop shooting at me, because they actually do deal a decent amount of damage, and uh, I genuinely I would recommend playing it fairly safe around them, because they do get quite dangerous indeed. Moving on though, this is the place where you'd normally get the sword, but we already found it in the secret area. The rest of these enemies we're just gonna swoosh. This message, it'll say, use the whispers as wisely. It may strike many foes at once, indicating the side of the projectile, I suppose. I don't love fighting these enemies with the 
sword, if I'm being honest, but it's technically something you can do, unfortunately. I struggle with the uh, having bad aim. <laughs> I'm not very good at aiming in 3D, honestly, in this game, so... Uh, okay, it honestly is better for me to just use the Azure Orb because it homes in on those enemies instead. It makes it a lot easier. Why not make life easier on yourself? As you can see, they do still die pretty quickly from this weapon as well. You don't need as many hits with the sword, obviously, but... It just makes every weapon good. Like, there's always a use case for all the weapons in the game, and I can kind of appreciate that. It does make a lot more variety happen. Over there, a bunch of big guys. I, I'll i be honest, I don't know anyone's name. They're, the Codex has the names of all the enemies in the game. But again, because there is different enemies in every episode, it, I, I just didn't put in the effort. I'm not gonna lie. These are the big ones, and then there's the rockety ones, the grenade ones. You got the flying ones, and then you got tiny axes and bigger axes. So you, you, you find your own names. You find your own ways through it. Shoot the rune, move a little bit further ahead. I don't know if I mentioned the sucking capabilities of this axe, but it does work fairly well against these enemies. Just because when they're close to you, you end up usually sucking them in. And they just get destroyed by the axe afterwards, so that's wonderful. Destroy these last remaining enemies. My health is a little low, so I'm playing it a little bit safe. Though there is some health waiting for us down there. Uh, that's okay. And there is the final message right there, but we're still missing one secret. So first, let's activate soul mode to press that button, and let's press this button right here, which will open up a secret passage to some extra health. And because we pressed that button at the end, uh, we can't take the normal way back up, but there is a switch right here, which will lower an elevator and brings you back all the way to the top, so that's nice. Also, technically, this text is a little bit different in that it uses the word lift instead of platform. That's the end of the differences between text. <laughs> it's something I don't have to worry about in the next level because uh, they're all just pretty much the same text, so no worries. But let's move on to the second level. Now, because we are playing in warrior mode, we start off all um, all levels with the axe and no other weapons. Uh, in this chapter, that's not really a problem. It does make it a little bit more different, uh, difficult further along the line, but the axe is so good in this chapter that it honestly doesn't matter too much. You could probably just finish this entire chapter with just the axe and not really struggle at all. <laughs> First though, let us deal with a couple of the enemies here. Just a couple of enemies that die in one hit, not a worry at all. Uh, if we go here, we can get the Azure Orb back once again. Pretty much every level has just about every weapon that you could want, so playing with Axe for only just makes life a lot easier that way as well. You can jump around here and get that legendary soul, but I'm gonna save that for later. It just makes future fights a little bit easier, I feel. And I'm just gonna take care of some of the enemies here before taking the more regular path. I took decent hits in my face there. <laughs> but hopefully we can heal up a little bit. There is some health waiting for us here as well, after all. There is also a pool of water. I'll come back to that in just a moment. But instead, let's go jump into the water where we started the level. This is where we need the golden key later. Which means I went in the wrong direction. We instead are gonna go here. We're gonna go pick up all the health down here because I am running a little low and these tiny health pickups give you like five health each, which is a pretty good deal. Destroy the enemies. There is a new power up here. It is the torch power up. It doesn't show up that often in the game, but it lights up the place a little bit better than not having the torch power up. So pretty good deal. Also makes it a little bit easier to see the secret area waiting for us right here. There is a little elevator taking you down. And there is a new weapon waiting for us here, which I'm going to shoot an enemy with and then keep shooting it until after it's dead as well. Because it will create an interesting effect where it chain lightnings through all the remaining enemies and deals a whole bunch of damage. Like this text says, Volt, ri Volt Ride's secret power reveals with overkill. Or like the letters say, overkill with this. Which, yeah, that's accurate. If you just keep shooting someone that's already dead for a brief moment, it will chain lightning through the other enemies as well. It doesn't kill everyone in one hit, but it does significant damage to everyone. Which, uh, honestly, makes this 
the power of the weapon. It makes it why this weapon is so good. Because you end up just... If you find one weaker enemy, you can suddenly deal a whole bunch of extra damage to all these stronger enemies around it. Which is really nice. Very interesting weapon for sure. Jumping out of water can be difficult, but I managed. <laughs> uh, there is one... Oh my god, where is he throwing those grenades from? I wonder if you could rocket jump up there. Because these, these grenades that he's throwing... They do carry a hefty, like, explosion to the point that you could probably get up there. And I'm a little curious if I can make something like that happen. I'm gonna try exactly once. Nah, eh, never mind. <laughs> you can't get to pretty high spaces with those things. So I wouldn't be surprised if it's possible, but I'm definitely not gonna spend all day trying to do it. Instead, let's move on. We're just gonna stick with the axe for a little bit longer, though, even though we just got Voltride. Because the axe is... I just love it. <laughs> I love using the axe in this game. It's such a fun weapon to use. And uh, to be fair, both of these weapons, both the Azure, Azure Orb and the Volt Ride, require blue mana to use. So if you use one, you're also using mana from the other as well, which is something you need to be somewhat aware of because otherwise you're going to run out of ammo very quickly. But that's just the way it goes. There is uh, four different ammo types in this game, and a lot of it gets shared through different weapons. So be aware of that. There is also an orange uh, mana pickup that I just picked up here. If we go a little bit further, we can pick up the Celestial Claw, which is a fun time. Uh, this weapon, it's our game's rocket launcher, and every time you switch uh, to that weapon, you get a slightly different projectile that you can use. Canonically, I believe it fires planets that it uh, sucks to that celestial orb stick and it's just it's just canonically a fun weapon, isn't it? <laughs> just a concept behind it. It's just a fun time. I really appreciate it. But occasionally you also get the planet Earth and I think there is an achievement for shooting Earth at an enemy and you'll get a little message at the top of the screen as well that says something along the lines of dude you just blew up the Earth. Hey, look at that. <laughs> look at that what we got in our hands. Surprisingly quickly, honestly. The nice thing is that you can just switch back and forth to the weapon over and over until you get it as well, so... It is almost a guarantee if you just try long enough. Uh, but let's just shoot it at an enemy. And indeed it does say, <laughs> you just blew up the earth, which... Yeah, that's... Fine. But let's continue moving on through the level. Slowly but surely we are filling up our soul power there. Which is the main reason why I didn't want that legendary soul, but it, because it all kind of ends up working out this way. I'm taking this kind of weird path all the way around because it ends up uh, with you sneaking up on a couple enemies that way. We don't have a lot of rockets, but occasionally I do like to use one. Because it does deal a decent amount of damage to some of the enemies. Plus, when you sneak up to the enemies like this, you can kind of sneak up on this one and get a little bit of a close look at what you're fighting, so that's nice. Unfortunately, I missed. I don't fully understand the sucking mechanic because sometimes it works and other times it doesn't. I don't know if the enemies need to face you or something like that. Doesn't really matter. If we press this switch, it is going to open that door right there and that door right there. And there's a bunch of enemies behind it. Uh, and I don't really want to deal with them just yet. Instead, let's go to this secret area. Because there is another way that we can deal with the enemies that are behind those doors. Uh, if we go here, we can get this big soul and uh, fully fill up our soul power, which is nice. I forgot to pick up the sword, but it's right here. And there we go. And with that, we can go underneath this for a secret area. And uh, we'll be inside as well. And we can use the soul power that we have to just destroy everyone here with the sword. The sword is genuinely... Probably my favorite soul power. There is a full green mana pickup right there, which is nice. And we're just gonna destroy these enemies from behind. Behind the now opened door. The door opens the moment you get in here, so the button, unfortunately, to my knowledge, no longer really does anything. But you can still press it if you so desire, so that's nice. Uh, Volt Ride's capability with the... Uh, soul power is more or less just a stronger version of regular Volt Ride. So, ended up not showing that off, but I'll probably show it off later. I'm also always crouching against those enemies. I'm not sure if it actually is effective, but it makes me feel better. <laughs> makes me feel like there's a smaller chance of them hitting me, and I feel like it does genuinely work, so... I appreciate it. I don't know if it works, but it makes me feel better, and that's good. 
let's deal with the enemies right there. There is, is this the first message? Uh, the second one. Uh, this one right here, the first one is Volt Ride. This, I think this the text is identical, which is those who would worship the sun are blind. And if you read through the codex, you can find uh, a whole bunch of information about the sun and the moon and all that good stuff. I'm not going to go through any of that. We're just going to play the game instead. <laughs> Underneath this elevator, there is a secret health pickup. And I am actually going to go back just a little bit here. Because there was that legendary soul that we hadn't picked up yet. Not the one at the start, but the one that was underneath this staircase. It doesn't take that long to go back to. And I uh, might as well get it. Plus, I haven't shown off the soul power with the celestial claw yet. And uh, that's a good one as well. So let's see if we can make use of that. Go up here. There should be a couple enemies waiting for us. Indeed. We'll use the sword for a couple of enemies here, and then we're going to switch to this and shoot some suns at enemies. <laughs> Such a cool weapon. And like you can see there, the Volt Ride, it just zaps even harder than usual, and it just destroys these enemies so quickly. And the Chain Lightning effect still works as well, so it's, it's just a really good time overall. Uh, using soul power does generally consume more ammo as well, so you do need to be a little wary of that, because... In this level, you only get the Celestial Orb in um, Celestial Claw in the secret area. Also, there's a staircase going down. Now, previously, this was just a cool-looking tower. But yeah, the, because the Celestial Claw is only in the secret area, you just don't get that much ammo for it in this level. So be wary of that, I suppose. And then finally, there is one more secret area up here. It's a little tricky to get to. You can just barely jump around this. And uh, I'm just going to pick up the health pickup, even though we were only missing 7 health, but it's a pretty good deal. That is 6 out of 7 secrets. Does that make sense to me? Not immediately, but we'll see if uh, we can make that work. <laughs> I feel like I missed the secret somewhere along the line, but we'll figure that out in just a moment. Instead, let actually, I know which one I missed, which is the soul power right here, which is what I meant to pick up at this point anyway, so that works out very good. Because it's just nice to have this already before we enter the next area. There is an achievement for keeping the soul power active for 30 seconds. I recommend just doing it in easy difficulty because you get significantly more soul from every soul that you pick up. But I think you can technically do it here because there is one of these pickups right at the start as well. And you can just kind of keep this active. I pressed a button at the start there that was next to that enemy because it opens the door and that is a pretty good time we can now kill these remaining enemies we can pick up the legendary soul halfway through and as long as we just keep picking up these legendary souls or just regular souls drop from the enemy that are usually quite large as well we can destroy just about everything here and retain that soul power for a long period of time and look at that Everyone gets destroyed. We use a different amount of weapons, and unfortunately it just ran out before I could speed through that underwater section right there, but it's all good. We had a good time. We all had fun. We killed all the enemies. We got all the secrets. We got all the messages. Passageway to the vaults of midnight. And this usually indicates that you're at the end of the level. If you want to go back, there is a door here that opens that takes you back to the place with the secret volt ride and whatnot but since we got everything here anyway we can just go through this passageway and call it a day fun level good time we have seen plenty of different weapons and there is still a couple more although we're only going to see one more in this episode to be fair but let's move on to level three now the vaults of midnight uh that's going to be an interesting level for sure immediately after jumping down there is a hidden Celestial Claw to start the level. We have to crouch a little bit, but you can just uh, barely reach it. And having a rocket launcher at the start of this level is just useful for so many different reasons that are becoming very obvious very quickly. But first, let's deal with the various grenade thrown bastards. There is a secret area waiting for us down here. And that is that. With that, we can move on upwards. The sword is awaiting us. And there is going to be a couple of enemies here that are all not particularly scary. <laughs> no worries whatsoever. Now one thing that makes this level interesting, let's first check out this text. 
is that our leader, Guardian of the Moon, has now dreams of death and pain. But the main thing that we have to do in this level is we have to open this door, uh, which requires the silver key. And the silver key is all the way up there. And we have a rocket launcher, effectively. So there's two ways to do it. First of all, you can rocket jump to that top one if you're crouching, because it's not solid entirely. I don't know if I can show this off without making a video separately. But yeah, you can actually just crouch to the top one with a rocket jump. Secondly, you can uh, just get up there like this. You don't take that much damage from rocket jumping either, but let's just do this the regular method as well. Because there is a whole level to explore here, and it does have a bunch of interesting stuff as well. So let's actually just enjoy ourselves as we progress through the vaults. First of all, just a couple of flying guys, a couple of small guys, big guys, you know, you know the deal. We're just gonna axe through most of it. The Azure Orb is waiting for us here. And nothing our axe can't handle. <laughs> no worries whatsoever. Down here, a couple more. There's one more grenade guy waiting for us as well, but the sword is very, very capable of slowly but surely taking care of business. But if you want something a little bit better, there is a hidden weapon waiting for us. I'm actually going to walk forward a little bit first because I don't want to aggro these and create weird situations. But honestly, a lot of the fights in this first episode, you can... You can finish them by just swinging your axe around for a long period of time. <laughs> and quite frankly, it's just such a fun time to do. Uh, who's still out there? There he is. Sometimes there's enemies above you in this place that will start aggroing you a little early. And uh, that's a little tedious, but we dealt with them easily. Jumping down here. If you go all the way down, you insta-die, so don't do that. But inside this little hole, there is a weapon. The Star of Torment. You have a keen eye. Use the weapon. Restore our glory. And that's exactly what we're going to do, because this might be one of the most fun weapons I've ever played with <laughs> in, in any game. Maybe since, like, the Stake Launcher and Painkiller. This might be my favorite thing ever. Uh, there is some blue mana there if you're running low, but we are full, so let's just move on. This weapon is wild. If we just take this enemy as an example, we can just shoot an enemy and he just flies into the wall and he's just stuck there for the rest of the level now. It deals a whole bunch of damage. Uh, the soul mode is even more ridiculously powerful and also somewhat homing. It just creates a whole bunch of these projectiles and you can just take care of everything. Downside is costs a little bit of mana to use. <laughs> as you saw, I just used up all of my green mana, which is obviously a little bit of a waste, but god, it, it genuinely, I love that weapon so much. It's such a fun time to use, and it works for so many situations. You can get a little overwhelmed with it if you're facing a lot of uh, weak enemies that just deal a little bit of damage, but you're just facing a lot of them, but... If you're just dealing with one or two strong enemies, it just decimates them. It's so good against bosses. It's it's just a good time. It's just a great time, honestly. I also forgot about this message. Uh, midnight, moonlight, sun be gone. Which I think, once again, the text more or less just says anyway. So with that, we can move on. We can get a Celestial Claw that's not secret. And the nice thing about a non-secret Celestial Claw is that uh, that means you're usually going to get ammo for it as well. So we can use the rocket launcher a little bit more uh, than ordinarily. We don't have to. But we do also want to retain some of those rockets for a secret area coming up later. But it doesn't mean I'm not going to have some fun. <laughs> we only need so many rockets ultimately. And uh, we might as well shoot a couple of them at the enemies every now and then. There is an enemy there that shoots grenades. I just want to deal with it before healing up. Mostly I just want it to be dead because it's it's a scary enemy. In the water there is a secret area with some health inside it. There is a non-secret rocket or planet waiting for us over there, which is the only thing that's inside this little cave. But it's there. And with that we can move onwards to another place where we can axe everything to death. Which is very much the theme on this first um, first episode. In the later episodes, the axe does become not the preferable weapon. So the, the, the once again, the fighting is going to be a little bit different between episodes, which is nice. Pressing the switch is going to make a couple of flying enemies appear. 
which once again we're just going to use the Azure Orb because they're a little far away and most of our weapons are kind of slow. I mean, the, the Star of Torment works pretty well against those flying enemies as well. But uh, I don't trust my aim that much. <laughs> I'm not going to worry about it too much. I want to use the Azure Orb every now and then as well, you know. We can't just have the entire playthrough with this weapon because it would work, but, it, uh, you know, it's just not ideal. By the moon I feel worried, or as the letters say, moon good, sun bad. Very nice. Let's destroy these enemies first. There is a secret area over there that I just walked past, but I just want these enemies to be dead first. Uh, because I would like to have the legendary soul that's waiting for us over here. You can actually shoot this button way earlier, like that's the start of the level right there, but I find doing it now uh, makes it a little bit less likely you're going to pick that up by accident, so just uh, personal preference. Big room! Big shiny projectiles that go through everything. I'm gonna walk around the edges of the room because occasionally there's a grenade throwing enemy that doesn't quite wake up otherwise. It's right next to this button. Press the button, shoot some more of these wonderful projectiles roughly at that staircase. And I assume that will be most of them. You can still hear the enemy things just bouncing around. Occasionally enemies from upstairs are still gonna be running at you. But it's very easy to miss like an enemy in this room. Which is why I'm just going to make sure to double check it. If need be, we can always use the ADAR cheat that I talked about previously. But I do want to try to not cheat that much during this playthrough if I can help it. But if it can't be helped, it can't be helped. You know, at the end of the day, I got things to do. So we'll just uh, see how that ends up working out. I do want to do maybe like a cheat showcase or something. Maybe at the end of the game or something like that. Because there is some interesting stuff in there, including some... Stuff that's not in the codex. The ADAR is one of them, and it's probably the only actually useful one that's not in the codex, but there's a couple other ones which are a good time. <laughs> it's at least kind of interesting to show those off, so... Make sure to look forward to that at the end of the game, I suppose, because there's some interesting stuff in there. For now, though, we're just gonna keep swinging our axe. I do kind of want to retain some of my health here, for reasons that will become obvious very soon. That is an enemy that got very stuck on that wall. <laughs> Made a very interesting sound while he was stuck there. Fun times. But a little bit further ahead, we can jump down into the spinny business. There we go. God, love that. So this is where the one of the few, if not only, rocket jump requiring secrets is. Uh, there is a health pickup right there. Rocket jumping in this game is a little quirky. Uh, I am genuinely not kidding. It is based... The height that you get is based on your FOV. So right now, uh, if we go to options, video, uh, set FOV, I'm playing at a field of view of 90. Uh, mostly because I'm okay with 90, but also partially because if you put it too high, then this secret becomes more or less unreachable. Whereas at 90, uh, we can sort of appear at the right height all the time and make these jumps with relative ease. But there is a health pickup right there, it counts as a secret area. If you play at particularly high FOV, then you will have the rocket hit the floor quicker, or the planet in this case, I suppose. But you will get less height. You'll get more horizontal speed, I believe. There is a whole article written about it with some... Um, extra additional video information somewhere on speedrun.com one of the guides has some information about it but mostly you just need to know that if you're struggling with that secret just temporarily or permanently whatever you want to do lower your fov for a little bit so you can make that jump alternatively you can just type in aero and just fly there and uh, <laughs> you won't have to worry about it i don't think this game is particularly uh, bothered by you using cheats in terms of like getting achievements or anything like that. So just go nuts. Like just just play the game you <laughs> you want to do it. You know, don't worry about life too much. It's all a good time. Let's now use our remaining rockets because we no longer have particular needed rockets. It was mostly just for that one secret. Uh, so might as well just use our remaining ones right here. There is one more message right here. The solar acolytes think they're so great. And the text, I think, is a little different. I have it written down somewhere. I think it's by the moon. I hate the sun. 
That seems right. I believe that. There is also a soul all the way over there. Yeah, you can reach it by just jumping around this platform if you so desire. I'm not really interested because it's not going to give me soul power anyway, so I'm just going to move on instead. We're missing four more enemies, which is good, which is, that's what I'm expecting. If we pick up the silver key, then there is going to be four enemies waiting for us right here. And a couple of rockets later. Very nice. Ah, uh, you know what? Let's go get that soul, actually, because there is one more thing that you can do, uh, which I'm probably going to do later in the game as well, but I might as well see if I can do this now. I'm going to give this exactly one shot, because uh, if I fail to jump, then you know what? I'm just going to move on. <laughs> there we go. So now we can activate soul power. So let's, with that, go to the end of the level. Uh, if we go to this door now, it's going to have a fun opening sequence. It's going to show off this symbol, which I think I mentioned before, but it always indicates that you are at the end of the level. And once it's fully open, you don't need to wait for this, but you can. We're going to activate soul power, and then we're going to end the level. Because at the end of the level, you get little rewards for all of the things that you've done. Mostly we'll be seeing... Explorer for finding the secrets, Killer for killing all the enemies, and Scholar for finding all the messages. But there is also one for leaving the level with soul power turned on. Uh, it's I think there's an achievement for it. I'm gonna in the next video there's going to be a sequence where I'm just gonna get almost all of them in one level. But we'll see that when we see that. But for now, let's go on to the final level of episode one, which is the Lunar Sanctuary. This is going to be the first boss fight of the game. Let us get some ammo, let's get a sword, let's get an azure orb, and let's shoot that button. If you shoot that, it's going to open this little hole with a secret area inside it. If you're playing on easy difficulty, these six medium souls is enough to activate soul power, I believe, which gives you an indication of how much more you get in easy difficulty compared to evil. Uh, this will say, all that was good is gone. Use these items to defeat the Guardian. And that's... Uh, we'll kind of do that. We can't use the orange mana because we're playing on warrior mode and as such don't have a Celestial Claw. But moving forward, there is going to be a boss right there. The Moon Guardian. He has a melee attack and he has a swooshy projectile attack. I'm just going to use my sword, actually. And... It's, it's the first boss fight. You shouldn't really be too worried about this. Uh, as long as you can kind of avoid the projectiles that he's shooting and don't get into melee range, you're probably going to be alright. More comments on that later. There is a full health pickup right there in case you get hit by everything like I just did. <laughs> uh, which definitely makes this fight even easier as well. But just keep hitting him with your sword. And before you know it, there will be no more Moon Guardian. And there you go. That is the end of the first boss. Once we go up here, we can go through the portal. And we have completed episode one with all the things that I wanted to do. Now there is a little bit more to show off there, but we'll get to that in a second. First, let's continue. Welcome back, champion. The, to the gateway of the ancients. Uh, we are back on the level select thing with I love this color scheme so much, but we'll get into that in a second. If we press tab now, it'll say that we have completed the Astral Equinox. If we try to go into this portal again, we actually get a little level select where we can uh, pick which level we can go into. Didn't actually, I was wondering what would happen if I did that, but if you press cancel, you'll just uh, sort of go through it. But you can see what you've done your best time so far. There is another strategy that you can use against that boss, uh, which if we just quickly grab this and we'll just uh, quickly press the button for the secret area we'll read the message and then quickly run that's that part's not necessary but it's just for fun later on if we uh, grab our axe I did previously say don't go into melee range but if we just sort of crouch next to him and we're just gonna axe him a whole bunch and just circle around him a whole lot more often than not uh, this is what happens. Uh, I wasn't crouching so good because I accidentally switched the language settings on my keyboard there. <laughs> uh, but the axe, is, the axe works against everything in this chapter. It's so good. So I'm going to use up the remaining mana that I have. 
and just jump through the portal. And because we did that, we beat the part time and we ended the level without any mana. So we got Speedrunner, which is uh, for beating the part time. We got All Out for finishing without mana. And then we got Hardcore for getting five or more awards, which is really the only reason why I went out of my way to read that one message. So you could actually uh, read all, get all five things and get the Hardcore. Just a little bit easier. I, I think it's probably the easiest place to get it because it doesn't take that long. Welcome back, champion. And fighting that boss is uh, just not that difficult, so not bad. Now, before we end the video, let's just enjoy this color scheme. I, uh, God, it, <laughs> it's it looks so good. I every time I see this, I'm I'm just filled with joy. And from here, you can just barely see the little ooh, ooh what's this message blinking over there. So you can actually uh, see it a little bit earlier if you hadn't noticed it before. So good stuff there. Over here, this door should now open because we have beaten the first mission. That text is now no longer readable. And we can get ready for the next video. The portal to the domain of the Sentinels is right there. And that will be what's coming up next. So I hope you all enjoyed it. Next time we play, we'll be going through the second episode. And I hope to see you all there. Bye bye.